weight loss industry just in the US was 90 billion US dollars in 2023, primarily fueled by the demand for obesity drugs. It's not just the pills though, the weight loss industry includes gym subscriptions, surgeries and fad diets. It's estimated to be a $160 billion industry worldwide in 2024. It's a huge industry that thrives on the gullibility of innocent people and myths and misconceptions to keep people coming back for more. Today in this video, we'll look into the truth of the weight loss industry, what evidence-based science has to say about losing weight and what are a few traps to avoid. This is part one of the series that will help us maintain our ideal weight and a healthy body. So let's dive in. Hi everyone, my name is Aina, I'm a flight attendant and a cabin crew trainer. Apart from travel, other topics that excite me are leadership, health and wellness. Welcome to this channel. The weight loss industry is a billion dollar industry that thrives on making people feel gullible. They prey on our insecurities and promise unrealistic results. Now, people perpetually want to lose weight. It could be 5 kgs here or there and we obviously have people who are overweight and want to lose weight. What these big pharma companies and fitness marketers thrive on is misinformation that is out there. Through a series of videos that will be based on evidence-based research, let's bust a few myths and make this world a healthier place. Let's first talk about the magic pill everyone seems to be hawking. The weight loss supplement industry is a behemoth preying on our desire for a quick fix. But here's the truth, there is no magic pill. These companies thrive on making us feel like we're not good enough and not strong enough to lose weight on our own. So if anyone tells you that just having this one pill or just not having a fat rich diet will help you lose weight and maintain it is lying to you. Some of these medications such as Ozempic are drugs approved for type 2 diabetes. Now since they also led to weight loss. People started taking them as a quick fix for losing weight. We must understand that the moment you stop taking these drugs, you'll put on that weight and that these medications have side effects that we don't want to have for life. And the reality is most of these pills are not FDA approved for weight loss and can be harmful to our health. Well, our bodies are a complex piece of machinery. We need a holistic approach to weight loss and that one pill will not work. When you understand this, there's freedom in it because you no longer go searching for that magic pill or that magical herb or detox. The other point I want to touch on is fad diets. We've all heard about keto, paleo, Atkins and whatnot. It seems like there's a new diet craze every week. But please understand that we do not need to follow any particular diet blindly. All these diets may have certain things that are great about them, but they're not complete in themselves. And I don't want you to follow extreme things in life. We all need to kind of strike a balance and understand our own bodies. We also need to put the cultural context into our eating plans as cultures have a huge influence on our biology too. But the weight loss industry wants you to believe that diets work. 
However, studies show that dieting rarely works in the long term. Notably, 85% of dieters end up gaining weight back within a year. Ever wondered why those processed snacks are so darn tempting? It's just not the diet industry we need to be wary of. FMGCs or fast-moving consumer goods companies use behavioral signs to get you addicted to their products. From sugary snacks to processed foods, these companies know how much sugar, how much salt, and that tanginess needs to go into those chips of yours so that they can manipulate our brains and keep us coming back for more. It's important to be aware of those tactics and make conscious choices when it comes to what we eat. I've briefly mentioned the corporate greed here and there, but we must understand that most big organizations want to increase their profits. Now, nothing wrong with that, but it should not be at the cost of our health. When we understand this, we can take control back and consume what's good for our body and mind. I'm also not saying that we should not enjoy life, but we need to understand how these companies are using behavioral psychology against us. We live in a polarized and capitalist society where people will tell you that if only you follow a particular diet and lifestyle or take a particular pill, you'll be healthier. But what does science say when it comes to weight loss? Here's the not so secret secret for you. It's all about building healthy habits. A combination of healthy eating, regular exercise, sound sleep, and mindfulness is the key to achieving long-term weight loss. Instead of falling for quick fixes, in the future videos, we'll be focusing on creating a sustainable lifestyle that will benefit your overall health in the long run. We'll be moving away from myths and fads and towards evidence-based science. So, what are the basic principles of weight loss? It all comes down to balance. The relationship between food, your body, and your weight is a complex one, but let's put them into three basic principles. One of the things that you need to focus on is that you need to be calorie deficient. In simple language, it means that you need to consume fewer calories than your body is burning. It's not that simple though. You know, it's not as simple as calorie in is equal to calorie out and you lose weight. We'll get into the science of how our bodies process different kinds of calories and from different sources such as carbohydrates, fats and even proteins and which are better sources of calories. You don't need to starve yourself forever. Once you reach your ideal weight, you need to take in calories that will maintain that ideal weight of yours. We'll look into which are better sources of micronutrients for our bodies, what we need to have more of and what do we need to have less of, and design them around behavioral psychology. Second one is moving your body enough along with weight training. Now, weight training is something that is true for people like me too, who do not want to lose weight. Now, especially when you hit your 30s and 40s and later, you must do weight training. Sadly, again, most cultures do not have a system in place in which Exercising in some or the other form is part of our daily lives. Now, we do not need to go to the gym every day and lift weights. There are weight-bearing exercises we can do in the comfort of our homes without any gear. 
This will depend on the goals that you want to reach. Even just two to three times a week of weight training will do wonders for your body. We'll also look into how we can up our game when it comes to metabolism. Last one is sticking to what works for you. Please know that any weight loss that happens rapidly, be it bariatric surgery or a magic pill or fasting will come back sooner than later. We need to have patience and kindness towards ourselves to make it a lifelong sustainable and even an enjoyable process. You might not reach your goals in a week, a month or even a year. And please know it's okay. This journey of weight loss can be a fulfilling one as you start understanding that a lot is under your control when we start taking baby steps. You'll also build resilience in the process. If you're having trouble losing weight or you've been struggling to lose weight for a really long time, please know that you're not alone. We'll build on our understanding of the signs of weight loss and what are some of the best practices for the long run. So ditch the fad diets, ditch the magic pill and focus on building healthy habits that work for you. Let me know what myths about weight loss have you heard. Share them in the comments below and let's debunk them together. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content on debunking industry myths and promoting evidence-based approaches to weight loss. Let's start the revolution of healthy living. On that note, till we meet again, Aina signing off and may you understand your body and mind on a deeper level and give it the fuel it needs.